Hi and welcome back to a new video. This video was actually planned a little bit different because I received this nice G-Skill Kit 7200 Megatransfers C36 and this is a 48 gigabyte kit. It consists of two 24 gigabyte memory sticks, which is possible because from this year there are also 24 gigabit ICs available prior to only having 16 gigabit ICs. And that's quite interesting because it kind of closes the gap between the 32 gigabyte kits and also the 64 gigabyte kits. And if you're like tight on a budget, you could, instead of getting a like slower 64 gigabyte kit, you can get a like faster performing 48. So that's kind of interesting. I did some benchmarks around this. And then, I mean, you have probably seen everything around this with the AMD CPUs dying and then CPUs dying on Asus board. Then Steve investigating all of this in several videos, then calling out Asus for some very questionable things. And then also Jay stepping back from having Asus as a sponsor. I decided to make this more about like Expo, XMP and some kind of weird warranty disclaimers. This video is powered by Hetzner with their brand new EX44 dedicated root server. Powered by the recent Core i5-13500 with 6P and 8E cores, this server will be very efficient and at the same time powerful, which allows Hetzner to offer the server for only 44 euros per month. This includes 64 gigabyte of memory, which can optionally be increased to 128 gigabyte if needed. Two 512 gigabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSDs in RAID 1, together with the gigabit connection, allow a very fast workflow with unlimited traffic. Find out more in the link below. I don't want to go through the entire background. I strongly recommend to watch all the videos that Steve published around this entire topic. Also the one from Jay, where he steps back from like working with ASUS. That's quite interesting. But to sum it up quickly, we had a very high SOC voltage of around 1.4 volt applied by the board by loading Expo profiles. And this voltage on some CPUs caused the CPU to die and thus also damage the main board further. And then after this was kind of public, all the mainboard vendors rolled out new BIOS versions. And for example, Asus also did one and they stated that they're now limiting the voltage to 1.3 volt. So far so good. But then Steve investigated and he found out that it's not really 1.3 volt, it's in reality sometimes 1.34, which is still exceeding the recommended limit, which is not that great. But which was actually worse was the disclaimer that was put underneath the BIOS release, stating that this is a beta BIOS and it's actually not covered by warranty, which meant that it might make the situation worse for the user. So in a result, like prior to flashing this like safe BIOS, you might had like a BIOS with a higher risk of killing the CPU. But I mean, the board was covered under warranty and the CPU probably as well. So if everything died, you would just get a new board and a new CPU. But with the BIOS that's officially or according to the disclaimer not covered by warranty, you would actually lose the board warranty and if, it th if things still die, it's your fault. So that's actually not that great. And that's how all of this like exploded. I mean, there are more things to that than this. That's why I would recommend to watch this video. And that's where we kind of close the circle because we are now going back to the memory benchmarks, especially keeping in mind Expo and XMP with the limited clocks. We will now look at some benchmarks and then we will go back to some like weird disclaimers. I started working on this already a few days ago and since this is an XMP kit, I also chose to use a 13900KS. Also because some boards are not quite ready yet for those 48 gigabyte modules. And now going to the Intel Arc page of the 13900KS to check out some specifications. You will see that the CPU is listed with a max memory clock of 5600 megatransfers per second for DDR5 and max 3200 megatransfers per second for DDR4. And that's why I chose the benchmarks and competing memory kits accordingly. We are starting with ADA64 read and write performance with the memory benchmark. And in total, I chose six memory configurations. The lighter ones are the DDR4 kits and we are looking at 3200 megatransfers per second and also 3600 megatransfers per second. The yellow kits are DDR5 with 4800 up to 7200 megatransfers per second. And the 7200 megatransfers per second kit is the g -Skill kit I was talking about with 48 gigabyte kit size, so two 24 gigabyte modules. All the other kits are 32 gigabyte kits with two 16 gigabyte sticks each. 
In the read-write performance charts, we can see the biggest differences. A 7200 DDR5 kit is about twice as fast as a 3200 DDR4 kit, which at least on paper is quite impressive. I often read people complaining about latency of DDR5 and that it's still behind DDR4, but I can also tell you that this is absolutely expected and normal. Here you can see that the latency of DDR4 is always lower than DDR5, at least on the average kits. But so is, for example, DDR3. DDR3 is always quicker when it comes to latency than DDR4 because we would look at like 40 to 50 nanoseconds. So you should not pay too much attention to this. But here in the latency, you can also see that the 4800 C40 kit, which is one of the first DDR5 kits, it's just extremely slow. And that's what you will also see in different benchmarks. And whether or how high the memory impact on the performance of your system will be is depending on the test. For example, in times by extreme CPU tests, we can see that the slow 4800 DDR5 kit is indeed also quite slow. But on the other hand, if you're looking at a 5600 or 6000 or 7200 megatransfers kit, doesn't really make a huge difference. Using graphic intense titles, such as Cyberpunk 1440p, you will usually be so much into the GPU limit that memory won't really help that much. And that's also what you can see here, with the exception of the 4800 kit, which is just very slow. But you cannot really just go by the resolution alone. So we're now looking at Remnant from the Ashes, again in 1440p. And I usually like to use this game because it's pretty memory dependent and you can also see it right here. Because just for example, Comparing the 3200 DDR4 kit with the 5600 DDR5 kit, the DDR5 kit will increase the minimum FPS, so the 1% lows, by 14%, which is definitely significant. And on the other hand, the quicker 7200 C36 kit with 48 GB capacity will only improve it very slightly. And at this point, I want to remind you that the 3200 DDR4 kit or the 5600 DDR5 kit are the kits that are the max allowed according to Intel. Because if you would run a 3600 DDR4 or a 6000 DDR5, it would actually exceed Intel specs. And that's where we will get back to the topic XMP later. In Assassin's Creed, 1080p this time, so a little bit lower resolution, the memory impact is even higher. And you can see that both the slow 3200 DDR4 and the 4800 DDR5 are significantly lower than quick DDR5 kits. If you are into fast FPS games like Valorant, the impact is even larger, especially because you are looking for higher FPS numbers. And the max allowed Intel kits 3200 DDR4 and 5600 DDR5 will lower your minimum FPS by about 50 FPS compared to the very quick G-Skill 7200 kit with XMP. XMP and especially drama around XMP is kind of an old story and it seems to come back like every two or three years. And I guess we are again at the same point and we are happily talking about this again, especially now that AMD also has their Expo technology, which is basically the same thing, just under a different name. And we will also look at AMD, but we will first look at Intel. If we go on Intel's website and check what is actually XMP, it tells us that Intel XMP lets you overclock compatible DDR4, DDR5 memory modules to enhance the gaming features built into your gaming PC with Intel Core processors. So XMP allows to overclock memory modules, but if you're not familiar with the topic, you might also look up what is actually overclocking? If we scroll across this overclocking page by Intel, they're advertising how good this actually is. And for example, if we scroll down, we will also find the XMP topic again. Intel XMP helps you overclock RAM, unlocking performance that exceeds standard specification. So just looking at this advertisement actually sounds all pretty nice. So you just do something, enable something, and it will give you more performance. On this page, you cannot really find any kind of hints or disclaimers talking about a warranty at all. Only if you scroll all the way down, you will find product warranties may not apply if the processor is operated beyond its specification. Okay, so now what? I mean, it tells you that you should do it because you get so much more performance. And, and then down there, it says that you may lose warranty. I think we have to go back to the XMP website because I saw some FAQs. Does use of Intel XMP void the CPU warranty? Altering the frequency and or voltage outside the Intel specification may void the processor warranty. So it may void the warranty, may. 
it, it doesn't even state that it will, which is already quite interesting. I think the reason for that is quite simple. That, for example, this is a 5200 megatransfers XMP kit. And this is within the spec of the CPU. So this will be fine for a warranty. Whereas this is also an XMP kit. It's also Intel certified XMP, but it's 7200. So it actually voids the warranty or it may void the warranty. It doesn't even state it in there. I don't know, is it, is it because it's sunny outside or it's raining outside? This is like, <laughs> like for a normal consumer, this is very confusing. For us, I would say experts should be fine because for us it's quite clear as long as it's running outside spec, it's voiding the warranty, probably. So probably not that clear actually. Yeah, that, that's like, I don't know. It's just not clear enough in which state what is going to happen. And I think that's quite unfortunate. Also, if you go to a 13900KS product page, you will actually not find XMP anywhere. So if you just go to the like 3900KS, you do control F and check for XMP, you will not find anything. But what about AMD? I mean, is it probably the same there, right? So we're now looking at the 7950X 3D product page. You will find all kind of useful information such as CPU clock speeds and also memory configurations. Um, but what else can we find here? So, okay, there are key features, supported technologies, AMD Expo technology. Yeah, I mean, that's nice. That's what we want to have, right? Is there anything other useful like, okay, footnotes? What does it actually say here? Gaming test of 5th December 22 by AMD Performance Lab. Using the following hardware, AMD Ryzen 7950X 3D and G-Steel DDR5 6000C30 with AMD Expo. Okay, that's nice. And if I'm maybe new to this entire thing and I don't know nothing about CPUs, I might just want to research a little bit more about Expo. AMD Extended Profiles for Overclocking. New for AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors. Get easy DDR5 memory overclocking with Ryzen optimized profiles for best performance and experience. Get in the game faster with AMD Expo. Sounds again like an amazing feature you should definitely use. But what about warranty? I think we just have to go back to the same page and just check with Control F if there's anything about warranty. Okay, so didn't find anything. That seems to be great. But I mean, okay, there's a footnote on easy overclocking game on. Let's check this on the bottom. Overclocking and or undervolting AMD processors and memory, including without limitation, altering clock frequencies, multipliers or memory timings, voltage to operate outside of AMD's published specification will void any applicable AMD warranty, even when enabled via AMD hardware or software. So on all of the Ryzen 7000 pages, AMD is highlighting two features. First of all, Ryzen technology, which is fine. I mean, it's a nice performing Ryzen CPU and also AMD Expo. Same thing here as with Intel, you have Expo kits that are running within specification and Expo kits that run outside of the specification. So technically voiding the warranty. And to the normal consumer, like the average guy, like not really transparent. And what I find really interesting is that if you check the footnote and like the benchmarks that AMD is presenting on their own product page, they are using memory that is technically voiding their own like their own warranty. So they, they show benchmarks with a configuration which is not covered by the warranty of AMD themselves. Great. So that's something, yeah, doesn't really make much sense. There is one more thing I find kind of hilarious. Uh, I mean, this is a 7000X 3D, which I just recently bought. Did you ever actually read the manual that's included? So like all the tiny stuff that's written here. I actually spent some time going through all the warranty stuff and like disclaimers. This is going to be hilarious. Originally, I wanted to go through this because I wanted to check if there is anything mentioned about Expo. And then I found some warranty limitations and they state overclocking the product even when enabled by AMD is a warranty limitation. And that's where the thing just gets confusing for the normal average user because they think about overclocking the CPU as like overclocking the CPU clock, like the CPU main clock, not the memory clock, even though this is connected to the memory controller. And that's what I think is 
most confusing or the, like the biggest point of danger. But then I found something which is actually, that's, that's the hilarious part. Use only with a thermal solution sold with or recommended for this AMD processor. See AMD's website for a list of third-party approved cooling solutions for the specific AMD processor you are using or in accordance with the applicable thermal design documentation. See amd.com support for details. Use of any other thermal solution will avoid the limited warranty. Now, if you want to waste your time and go to amd.com support and want to look for this cooler recommendation page or the technical documents, I have bad news for you because you will not be able to find it because it's simply not there, at least not on amd.com support. The only thing that you can find on the product page is actually liquid cooler recommended for optimal performance, which to me is quite a bit different to saying use of any kind of other cooler will void your warranty. So after spending a bit more time going through the entire AMD website, I found this Ryzen processor cooling solutions list. And if we scroll through this, looking for the cooler recommendation for our 7800X 3D, which is, as you know, a 120 watt CPU, it's quite interesting. First of all, we find a list for Ryzen 7000 CPUs with 105 watt TDP or lower. So for example, a Ryzen 7600. And here you can find a list with nine officially compatible or recommended CPU coolers. Then there's also a list for AM4 CPUs, but that's not really helpful for our 7800X 3D. And then all on the bottom we can find is 170 watt CPUs. So for example, a 7950X 3D. And officially, you are only allowed to use this CPU with one of these eight cooling solutions listed on here. So for example, you have a 7800X 3D or a 7950X or a 7950X 3D. And you thought, hey, I might want to pair this with my Noctua NHD 15 because, I mean, this is a very good cooler. It's like build quality is perfect. It's pretty quiet, still very strong performance these days. I have bad news for you because officially you lost the AMD warranty by mounting this cooler on the first day. And I mean, that's just because it's not listed in the cooler compatibility or like recommended cooler list and it's not a liquid cooler as stated on the product page. And obviously, I mean, that's not going to be the case, but that's just closing the circle back to XMP and Expo and like such weird disclaimers and warranty disclaimers the manufacturers do that are just completely stupid and I mean, that's not going to happen. Obviously, if you run this cooler on your CPU, it's, I mean, technically it is voiding your warranty, but I'm pretty sure that AMD is not going to complain if you run it, or I hope so. And now it was a lot of theory as well, because I mean, practically none of this really matters. Like me personally, I are made three CPUs over like 15 years, which is almost nothing. Because I only RMA CPUs where I'm personally sure that it was not my responsibility that the CPU actually died. For example, I remember a case of an 8700K, so that was several years ago. I was testing the CPU, it was not deleted, like no extreme overclocking or anything, and from one day to the other, it just refused to enter Windows and I always got like an instant blue screen. Which is a typical thing how CPUs die. And then I called Intel, the RMA support, and they asked me what kind of memory speed I was running. And obviously I knew that technically running this high XMP speed would void your like warranty. So I lied, which like I'm totally open about. And then I said like, I don't know. And they said, okay, no problem. We will send you the shipping label, take the CPU back. And I had a new CPU like the week later. So all of this was pretty smooth. I had the same experience, like exactly the same with AMD with a 2700X. It was the same thing. They also asked me about the memory speed. I said, I don't know, it was no problem. They took the CPU back and sent me a new one. And just from a moral standpoint, obviously, that's not the good way to do it because at least in like the German law, I think this could be fraud, being totally open about this. But then again, just because you enabled XMP or Expo doesn't mean that this was the cause that the CPU died. So it might not even be a correlation. The CPU might have died anyway. So it's maybe not even my fault. And as long as I'm confident that I didn't do any like hard modifications on it, like extreme torture, I feel fine sending this to the CPU manufacturer because they basically force me to lie to them. I mean, look at AMD. 
they're advertising the 6000 speed, which is like voiding their own warranty. And then they expect me to run it. And if it dies, they expect me not to ship it back. Doesn't really make much sense. And obviously it's the same thing with the cooler. If they would ask me on the phone, what kind of cooler were you running? And I say, oh, I was running this NHD 15 or like a Be Quiet cooler or like an EK custom water cooling solution. With that, not quite sure because they actually recommend liquid cooler, but technically with like, a, like an air cooler, like a big air cooler on any of these like 7800X3D, 7950X3D, they could technically refuse your warranty because in here they say it's not covered. And I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if that's the right approach to do it. Like these weird warranty claims have to change. I think that both Intel and AMD, they should sit together with the mainboard vendors and think about a way to make this better for the future. Because on one hand, all of these parties, like the mainboard vendors, Intel and AMD, they all love to talk about, advertise, XMP, Expo, high memory speeds. They love to talk about it. But when things go wrong, it's the consumer's fault. And I'm pretty sure that's not a good way. Because, I mean, that's why you, AMD, Intel, you force us to lie to you. Because, I mean, AMD is running the 6000 and then I'm doing the same and it dies and then it's my fault. Not so sure about that. And, I mean, it's the same with the coolers. Yeah, so that's how I ended up from shooting a 48 gigabyte memory kit video yeah, to, to this, like reading hours of warranty disclaimers and like completely useless stuff bundled with CPUs that probably nobody ever read. I mean, did you ever see AMD like official demo PCs at some kind of exhibitions? Right. They are also not running their own recommended cooler solutions. So what is this even about? And yeah, it's, not, it's just not really customer friendly um, to do this kind of behavior. That's why I hope both Intel and AMD and also the mainboard vendors will improve this for the future. Because otherwise, one solution would be that us reviewers, we would just stick to the recommended speed. For example, for AMD, that would be 5200. And for Intel, that's 5600. And as Steve already showed in his video with AMD, I mean, that's hurting performance quite a lot. And neither AMD, neither Intel, nor the mainboard manufacturers will want that. So they want us to show the speed, but they don't want to cover any risk that comes with it. That's something I don't really think is justified. When it comes to this kit, I mean, that's the reason why I originally started with this uh, video. Quite nice performance, was very easy to use and uh, kind of closes the gap between 32 and 64 gigabyte. And if you like are tighter on a budget and you're thinking about getting 64, this might be enough because you get a little bit more capacity than 32, but you can get a higher speed than maybe getting a 64 gigabyte kit. So that could be interesting if you want to look into this. I hope this was still an enjoyable video, even though it's like more like a theoretical video. Yeah, it was also... It was not really nice, like reading through all this, like uh, warranty disclaimers and stuff. So yeah, probably not going to happen anytime soon that I'm going to repeat this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.